welcome to this episode of Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr., part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I document life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And today I have a very special guest. He is certified platinum on Spotify, uh, Indie Music Hall of Fame, Ryan Daniel. Ryan, how are you doing today? Good, sir. And you? Oh, I'm doing awesome as always, and it's it's such an honor to have you here uh, on Hank's Corner. Tell me, where are you calling in from today? Uh, I am about, I live in a little tiny community, uh, about 45 minutes west of Nashville. So I'm in Tennessee, and uh, just I'm, I'm sitting at my table and uh, I'm just working and, and uh, you know, grinding out like everybody else. Yeah. So Tennessee, is that now your home? It is. Uh, since uh, about 2012, um, I think is when I came to Tennessee from North Carolina. Okay. So you've, you've really been all over because uh, you, you come from a line of military personnel in your family. You're, you're an Air Force veteran. Uh, your dad was, and I believe your grandfather was as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're definitely carrying on the family tradition. And and let me just stop and, and thank you for your service and your family service. You know, that that just means so much uh, that you were doing that for us. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right. And along those lines, um, you know, I got to see you out there in Freedom Jam uh, this past uh, summer, and I heavily promoted it here on Hank's Corner because it was a great show with great artists such as yourself and and many other artists, but it was for a great cause and given back to our veterans. Tell me, how what did that uh, show mean to you, and, and, and how was it for you being out there? Um, I mean... You know, I, when I got the call um, from from Brian Judy, um, I mean, first of all, I was honored to, to even get the call. Um, I uh, anytime I get a call like that um, to do something to raise money for our veterans or our military, our first responders, um, my first reaction is, "Wow, you call anybody and you called me." Uh, but so that was first and foremost. And then, you know, we got to the show. Uh, it those shows for me obviously for obvious reasons hold a very special place you know um as artists we get asked you know oh my gosh what's your favorite show or what's your favorite venue or whatever um for me it's anytime i get to play a freedom jam or um or a military base um or i get to help raise money for our veterans or for our first responders um or or ptsd awareness anything like that. Those are my favorite. Th- those are, those are what that's, that's partly what I signed up for. That's, that's kind of what I like doing. And so that particular show was amazing. And you're right. It was amazing artists. Everybody there was amazing. Uh, from me to Carly Rogers, to, to all the artists that, that played that day. Um, uh, I felt bad for the artists a little bit early on in the day. Cause it was hot. And yeah, it, it definitely was hot, but I guess that's one of the advantages of being the headliner that you were, that you get to play when the sun goes down. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we've, uh, but I've also not been that guy. So, um, but, but even the folks that played in the heat, um, they brought it and they brought a great show. And it was, uh, it was an honor and humbling to play with every single one of those artists. Um, and, and it's, uh, that, that show is, is so amazing all the artists that ever get to play that show, if they get offered to go play a freedom jam, uh, which I believe is going to happen yearly, hopefully um, they need to take the opportunity because it's a, it's a heartwarming thing and it, it makes you feel good. And, and the people that come are, are, are there to just watch you. And um, it's just a great time and, and, and a bunch of great folks that run that program. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, because the, the entertainment was just awesome. And, uh, you know, some of these names are just, you know, uh, just blasting out there that they're, you know, coming real popular. I mean, I know you already have a, uh, you know, a good, uh, following behind you, but some of these other artists are definitely hitting it big as well. And, uh, was there anybody in particular that you, uh, enjoy seeing, seeing there? I know that, they were all great, but uh, was there anybody that just kind of stood out to you? Um, I mean, you kind of put me on the spot here, but I mean, first of all, like I said, every single artist there was amazing. And 
all of us in my eyes uh, are superstars in our own right. And um, I don't think any artist there should let anyone take that away from them. Um, we are out there putting our pants on like any other mega a lister and um, and we're doing it for the right reasons. So with that said though, uh, obviously, and I, I'm, I'm horrible at names, but there was a little girl there. Uh, she was probably gosh, 11 years old, maybe. Yes. And that's one of the things I did want to talk to you about. Little 11 year old Raylan got up there with, uh, Raylan. Yeah, she got up there with Molly Lovett and and sung on stage with her. And I heard that you gave her some great advice. Tell tell us a little bit about that. I I mean, you know, she was she was a little bit nervous, you know, and and we got to talking. And her her mom and dad are amazing folks, and uh, you need that support system. And for her to be so young though, and she was very poised and. and professional um but she was a touch nervous and you know she kind of asked me you know what well, do you get nervous and i said i get nervous before every single show every single show and i've played gosh thousands probably by now um and, and i told her you know it's okay that that nervousness is what drives you that nervousness is a good thing and then i gave her some advice that that i live by uh that i've been that i've been basing my career off of, uh, so to speak. And, uh, I told her that, um, you know, the ones that don't make it are the ones that quit. And as long as she, you know, goes to school, you know, finish school, girl, don't play around. Uh, but, but, <laughs> but work hard and, and, and don't quit. And because she obviously has talent and, um, and again, she's so poised and so professional and she did an amazing job. She's, She's got a voice that, gosh, when I was, I think she's what, 11. I wish I could sing like that when I was 11. I mean, I mean, truth be told, she probably can out sing me now. So, uh, but it was great to see her, her, uh, her do her thing. And, and, and I continue to watch her whenever she gets posted on social media and, and I wish her the best. And I think she's going to be uh, a huge success if she stays with it. Um, you know, again, all the artists were great. I'm a fan of Carly's. Um, you know, I, I think Carly Rogers for my favorite song for her is, uh, is hell raised. Um, when yes, that song I dropped, definitely enjoyed that one. Yes. Yeah. When that song dropped, I, I was like download, you know, um, and she lives not too far from me, uh, in Dixon. So, uh, she's another great act that it was great to see her play. It was great to finally meet her in person. Um, you know, she's, she's a superstar. Um, so, you know, I think everybody at some point during that show kind of stood out to me and, and they all were so good that when it got to me, uh, Mark Perkins that went right before me, I mean, Oh my gosh, like, and Mark, again, a great guy, great artist, And he just set, they all just set the bar. And that's exciting for me as a headliner to go, okay, I see what y'all did here. And then it just drives me and my guys to just kick it up a notch. And that, that's what it's about. You know, that's what you want. And, uh, it was, it's just a great experience. Yeah. And I, and I just actually had Mark Perkins on my show. So, uh, uh, it, it, it kind of fits in that, uh, he was right before you, uh, you know, with the headliner. And, uh, as far as my podcasting, he's the show right before you as well. So it kind of, kind of fits in. But one of the things that I also took away, you know, from the artist there is that everybody seemed very nice, you know. Thank everybody that's doing, especially you, that for headliner, because like I said, it was a great cause for uh, uh, military veterans. But uh, tell me, you got a um, you know a new album on the horizon with a new single, Camo. Uh, tell us about that because it's been long, long awaited. Yeah, Camo. Um, <clears throat> it was a whirlwind for me. So end of two thousand nineteen. Uh, 2019 we had a great tour and i was coming off a great album that i recorded with very best uh, back for more um and uh we're going into 2020 and i had this huge tour planned and COVID hit and so we we were like what are we gonna do you know everybody's pivoting everybody's figuring out what we can do and i thought you know what i'm gonna record a single you know and uh, as I did that and, and started thinking about um, 
you know, how I could, you know, how I could pull this off. Um, I, I, I just was like, well, if they're going to pivot that way, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot by recording music. And a friend of mine in the business, and I say in the business, but I've been friends with him since high school, uh, James G, uh, came to me and him and Brandon Ireland, who was on The Voice, uh, they've been friends for a long time. They wrote this song, Camo, and they've been holding it for a couple of years. And he called me up because, you know, we were talking and he caught wind that I was going to record it, you know, a single that leads up to my album. And he said, man, I... I've been waiting for the, for the right artist. And he said, I feel like you're the guy. And he sent me the song and it was amazing. And I said, Hey, do you mind if I put my own twist on it? You know, IE the whole military thing and the ammo. And so um, I didn't take any songwriting credits, even though they offered it, I didn't, I didn't want to, um, but I just put my own little spin on it and loved it. Well, in the midst of that, I, I'm friends with Chet Roberts, the guitar player from three doors down. And I called him um, just for some advice on on something music, and I, and it was really irrelevant to even the single. But we got the talking, and I was telling him, "Yeah, I'm about to go in the studio, going to record, you know, a new single, lean up to my album." And he says, "Hey, why don't you record this this new song at our studio, you know, here at Rivergate?" And I'm like, "Huh? Like, I, I mean, I've been friends with him for a couple of years. I mean, I've opened up for Three Doors Down, and I didn't know they had a studio, you know." And he said, hey, uh, you know, I just let me, you know, why don't you just come to our studio and and, and let us cut it with you? And I was like, uh, yes, please. <laughs> so I banged out of Hendersonville and, uh, and and took us on down there. And we worked on it for, gosh, I don't know, maybe a week, you know, kind of getting up the instrumentation, figuring out what direction we wanted to go. And, and Chet produced it. Uh, Greg played drums on it. I mean, it just, it was amazing. And it, it was so cool to work with, I mean, obviously iconic, uh, you know, legendary three doors down folks are just, you know, when those guys talk, you listen, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, used to, you, they sold 30 million albums for a reason. Right. So right. as an artist, I'm going to listen. And, um, but it was cool because Chet kind of just brought out some new stuff in me and, and was kind of like, I hear something go with it. And it was new for me. We kind of thought way outside the box and and we did it and then dropped it and then my fans went crazy uh five weeks hundred thousand spins it it was the biggest song i ever put out in my career and i mean yes granted you know when you when you tag three doors down name on anything it's gonna (laughs) help it right uh I, i i credit that for sure but but also credit it's a great song it is and and it it was natural for me to have that a little bit of that country rock kind of sound and and it just it just it is what it is and and that led to me going wow um maybe i should base this album a little bit off of that because as an artist and i tell younger artists this all the time listen to your fan base they're telling you something i.e social media your download your spins your 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 your, your streams if they're if they're banging on something listen to them because that's what they want to hear that's what they like about it and by no means am i saying conform uh and be somebody you're not but um i didn't have to do that and it was very natural and so my fans were attracted to that so that's how we created the album and then when when chet called me up after the big success with the song um he said hey well how about recording your whole album with us and of course, again, I was like, yes, please. And, <laughs> and it was great. So yeah, it's, it's just been a great, like 18 months. I, I, I'm blessed and, 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 and lucky to have made the right moves and be in the right place at the right time uh, and work hard. But uh, yeah, camo was crazy. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and play camo here on Hank's Corn. <laughs> i 
Welcome back to Hank's Corner. This is Hank Jr. with Ryan Daniel, and that was Camo. Uh, tell me, how fun was it to shoot that video? Because it looked like a lot of fun. It, 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 was, it was amazing. And the cool thing about the Camo video was a lot of that, you know, what we call in the, in the, in the industry B-roll. Um, I, when we were getting ready to shoot the video, uh, me and uh, – uh, and JK, the guy, my, my buddy of mine, uh, who, who actually shot it, um, we kind of had the idea to go to our fans and go, hey, you're the reason this song is successful. How about you send us some clips, you know, of, of maybe at a show you came to or whatever. So a lot of that B-roll is from our fans and we put it in there. And then uh, and then we, of course, you know, then we shot the rest of it. And, it, and it's always so much fun because you're just we're just being silly and uh and and it's just uh it's amazing the support that we got for that video um and it was but but that video was definitely more for the fans uh to say thank you for the success and uh, they've they've given me and for continuing to support me and listen uh but uh yeah it was it was it was a bunch of fun and and, and all the clips that you see are real live clips of of shows and audiences and and just my fans and and i just i think i have the best fans i'm always hashtagging super fans uh because that's what i call my fans the super fans <laughs> because they're just they're like they're like superman and super women and uh they just continue to uh to 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 support me and and they're the reason that i'm successful all right and and that was you know, like I said, it was an awesome video, and it, it's great when you get to uh, uh, interact with the fans like that. But, uh, you know, th there was a time when, you know, uh, as big as you are now, that you were actually starting out. So tell me about that, and, and, and how did you get from starting out to where you are today? Well, I mean, you know, I, I did my Air Force time, and in the Air Force, I ended up um, – I, I, I take that back. I grew up in music, obviously. Um, my grandfather was a jazz drummer. He did eight years in the air force and got out and then was a jazz drummer his whole life until he passed. And so really in middle school and high school, I played drum. I mean, I was playing drums since I was seven years old. So I was always wanting to be like this big rock star drummer. And, um, and so, you know, you get older and high school ends and 
you know, reality kind of hits, you know, like, okay, I got to do something with my life. And Air Force just seemed like, obviously, like we talked about earlier, kind of the right path. And I loved it. But great decision. Don't regret it. Ten years. Perfect. Uh, I would still be in if it weren't for for music. Um, but I, I got in the Air Force. And then later on, uh, about halfway through my career, I got to tour with Tops and Blue, which is uh, an Air Force group that's, you know, real big. It's, it's like a big Broadway show. There's like country sets and pop sets. And amazing if, if if anything can teach you what it's like to be on the road, it's that because we didn't have roadies. You didn't have stage hands. You don't have, we did it all vocalists. We set the stages up. We tear it down. We drive, we did it all. So uh, it kind of re sparked my interest, but see, I went into tops of blue and I ended up being a vocalist and I kind of liked being up front. And so that led to, I did some more years and then I was kind of my 10 year mark and I met my producer Barry best. And we talked about a production deal and he's like, look, you really got something. I think you could, you could really make a go at this. And I literally was, you know, at 10 years, you, you, you either, once you re up, you're going to retire, you're going to do 20 and, or you need to get out. So I literally came home, sat everybody down, and my daughters were really, you know, kind of younger. And I just gave it to them and said, look, here are my options. And my uh, my daughter at the time, my my daughter, Emily, uh, was kind of like, I don't understand. She was little. She said, I don't understand, Daddy. And I was like, what do you mean you don't understand? And she was like, well, you always tell us that we can be anything we want to be and follow our dreams. She said, how come you're not going to? And that was my, and, and my other daughters, Kay and Lexi agreed. And they were like, yeah, daddy, you need to go follow your dreams. And so that's what I did. And I got out and I grinded. I remember my first shows were pickup truck, sleeping bag, a microphone, two speakers, a little PV six channel amp with a DVD player from Walmart. And I had one song, original song called a silent movie, my very first single. Mm -hmm. And the rest were tracks of, of cover songs. And I literally went out and played a whole year. Anybody that would let me play their bar club. It didn't matter. Just let me stick out a tip jar. Like, like, and I traveled all over doing that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know what that's like to to grind it out. And, and I tell them all the time, you know, they see me pull up in the tour bus now and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, and I'm like, look, it was not always like this. I was in a van. I was in a truck. Uh, I remember the first time I got an RV. I thought I was King Kong. I My RV, I thought it was this, you know, and it's just that stepping stone. You know what I mean? I, I uh, But I'm glad I did it this way. Um, I'm glad that I've worked my way to where I'm at and I'm still continuing to work, but I've, I've got it honest. I, I, uh, I don't come from rich family and, um, and all those things as far as money. Now I come from a rich family as far as love and support. Um, but, um, I I've worked to where I've gotten today. I've had nothing handed to me and, and I'm okay with that because I, when I lay my head down at night, um, I know that I did things the way I wanted to do it. And I know that I represented myself, you know, my sponsors, my family, my friends, and hopefully my fans in the light that they, that they approve of. And that's great. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that's great advice for those that are, you know, up and coming to kind of hear that. And like you said, you know, to do it honest, because, uh, you know, in the end, it should work out. I mean, I, I mean, obviously not everybody, you know, has the talent to, to hit it big, but uh, if, if you can do it right, you can do it honest, you can, you know, put your head on the pillow at the end of the night and say, hey, you know, uh, I, I did a great job. And so uh, because Brian Judy had asked, you know, hey, ask him what advice he would give to, uh, you know, up and coming artists. And, and I have to assume that that's, you know, some of the advice that you would give. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think that that, you know, um, don't conform just because you think that's what the Nashville standard is. Um, I have had opportunities to sign a million dollar deal, uh, literally a million dollar deal. And I turned it down. And, um, you know, do it because of this is what you love. I think 
some artists have lost that. I think some artists have lost why we do what we do. Um, and I think that um, working away the top is great. I think young artists need to know uh, two words, which are very important, work ethic. Um, if you are sitting around waiting for something to come to you, uh, you're going to be sitting a long time. I don't really care how talented you are because that the 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 idea of the Carrie Underwoods and the uh, you know, the, the, the people, it's such a small, small percentage of like that right place, right time. Um, get out there and grind, get out there and play. Uh, don't, don't, you know, I tell artists too, you know, Broadway's great. I think Broadway's amazing. I've played on Broadway, but if you think that a record label is going to go down to Broadway among all those tourists and all the people drinking and having a good time, and it is fun. Trust me, it's fun. But I literally was told by a record a and guy, like, we don't go down there no more. That was 30 years ago. Right. Yeah, things they have know, changed. Yeah, things have changed. <laughs> They're looking for artists who who have at least made themselves a platform. If there was, if I had to nail down one thing, Brian, uh, Judy, about what I would tell an artist, I would tell the two words, work ethic. All right. That's some great advice. So we're going to go ahead and play a song real quick called Hate Myself Tomorrow by you. And when we come back, we're going to hear the backstory to that. Absolutely. I can see you cold and lonely, but I still can't let you in. If that door closes behind you, I won't be letting go again. So I'm giving you this warning. Turn around and go back home. I'm gonna hate myself come morning when I'm waking up. I'm gonna hate myself tomorrow For what I'm saying to you now I'm not the answer to your sorrow How I wish I was somehow And he don't love you like I But that still don't make it right I'm gonna hate myself tomorrow For what I didn't do tonight I know you think that I'm crazy I must admit I think it too I have never felt so guilty For a deed I didn't do I never thought doing the right thing Would be something I'd regret What won't happen here tonight Is what I never will I'm going to hate myself tomorrow What I'm saying to you now I'm not the answer to your sorrow How I wish I was somehow He don't love you like I love you But that still don't mean Tomorrow, God, 
but I hate myself right now. And so that was Hate Myself Tomorrow by Ryan Daniel here on Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. So Ryan, tell me the backstory to that song because it's a great one. It is. Um, it's probably one for me that's that's uh, never going to leave me. Um, so uh, we were recording uh, my album Back for More, um, which you you know shameless plug. You guys can still get it on all streaming sites. Um, but you know I was recording with uh, with Barry, who uh, I, Barry Best is is an amazing producer, an amazing friend, and he is you know, 75% of the reason I'm where I'm at today, that guy has taught me so much about the business, taught me so much about songs. But so I was recording my second album with him back for more and we were writing and getting the songs together, but I was still touring. And I was in South Carolina doing a, um, I got invited to a writer's round and, but it was kind of weird because I wasn't going to be there so much as a writer. I was like opening up for these writers and these writers were um uh will nance uh who if people don't know who will nance is uh he writes a lot of brad paisley stuff um buddy brock who is famous for like aaron all aaron tippins mm-hmm. big number ones um and then of course you know another one which was one of my favorites which is the late kim williams uh, Kim Williams wrote like every Garth number one there is. Um, and so I'm a super Garth fan. Like I'm, I'm that, like, if I ever got to meet Garth, I would like lose my mind and, and probably cry. And like, that's my bucket list to, to at least meet him. Of course, I would love to go on tour with him. Um, but, uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm opening up and, and, and we're there the whole weekend and all these guys are absolutely amazing. Well, um, my manager at the time told Kim, you know, hey, you know, Ryan's a huge fan of Garth. And and people, people that don't know, uh, Garth and Kim were amazing friends. And, and uh, you know, Kim Williams, uh, what a great guy. Uh, God rest his soul. Ha- songwriter Hall of Fame. Uh, that guy's, he, he's, he's just, to me, one of the best I've ever heard. So she tells him this. And I'm, of course, embarrassed. And he's like, no, no big deal. And now I'm really nervous because I got to sing, you know, a 45-minute set with my band in front of a guy who, rightfully so, knows one of the biggest country artists ever to walk the planet. And so I get up there and do my thing. I come off stage and I, I sit with them as they're changing out the stage. And and they all, you know, were telling me great job. But, but you know, for me, I was like, you know, attracted to Kim and and he was like, hey, you're amazing. He said, you know, you remind me of a young guard. I was flattered. <laughs> he says, uh, I heard you're writing for your, your second album. I said, yeah. And he says, well, you know, um, I might got something for you. And I thought to myself, uh, yeah, yes, please. Uh, I mean, he could have wrote a song about digging ditches and I would have took it because it's Kim Williams, you know. And he says, you know, we're uh, I've been writing with Garth for, for his upcoming album coming out. And we've got a song that that it's not going to quite fit the theme, but it's a great tune. I think it'd be good for you. And I was like, whoa, hold on. You, you, you this is, you wrote it with Garth. So, so Garth co-wrote this one. And he's like, yeah. And he says, I already called him and let him listen to you. And he said, yeah, you're good to go. We can send it. Wow. So then I was like, I was like, hold on a second. You, you held the, the cell phone up. And so I'm just, now I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me right now. I mean, this, this is, you can't make this stuff up, you know? So he says, I'll have it. Give me your email and I'll send you the song and everything, you know, you know, be in your email when you get home. So uh, sure enough, that Monday I got home and looked at my inbox and there it was. Um, There was the song, uh, the license from Sony. um, And then there was the demo. And the cool part of the demo was it was just Garth Brooks and his guitar singing me the song. Wow. So. I instantly obviously took the song. Well, um, a couple months later, uh, Kim Williams passed and, 
and this is right when I'm getting ready to record the last couple songs of the album. And if you listen to the album back for more, it's kind of, you know, everything is kind of there, but, but hopefully people, when they heard that song, they hear the subtle difference in how we recorded it. We wanted to kind of pay tribute to Kim Williams and uh, his style of writing, his style of what made him famous. Um, and so my producer went back and we used a different microphone that they would have used in the late nineties to record on. We recorded in a different system that would have been a little bit more of that sound. And, um, and that's why that song kind of has that, that older, older country vibe that, that mid to late nineties country vibe, uh, Suzanne, uh, the girl that you're hearing there, who's amazing. Uh, she sang, uh, you know, on that song, all the background stuff. Um, so that song is pretty special to me. Um, I don't know if that song will ever get its due. Uh, heck, I don't even know if, if I'm hoping, I don't know if Garth ever heard it cause I'm a nobody, you know, but, um, for me, it's pretty special that, that, that I have a song that the, I mean, how many artists of my caliber could say they got a song given to them by Kim Williams and Garth Brooks? Probably not many. And, uh, and to have a demo by Garth, I mean, and, 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 and by the way, the demo of him with a guitar singing was just as amazing as he is on stage. Cause I've seen him wow. six times. Uh, he's just, uh, he's just a, he's just a great guy. And, uh, and, and so, uh, who knows you, uh, Garth, let me go on tour with you. Uh, at least let me hang out with you for 10 minutes. Uh, but yeah, it was a great song and, um, and, and I thank him and, uh, and again, God rest his soul, uh, for him to be such a gracious man to give me, uh, to give me a song like that. Uh, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah, that's such a great story. So that's, uh, you know, that's how Hate Myself uh, Tomorrow came about. And, uh, you know, you we talk about Garth Brooks and, and you got to see him six times, which is probably about uh, four or five times more than I got to see him. Uh, but he does put on a great show. And uh, you take that, uh, um, you know, that uh, inspiration from him when you get out there and do your shows. Tell us, you know, what would somebody expect? I mean, I got to see it firsthand, but what would somebody uh, expect to see at a Ryan Daniel show? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think Garth, I don't try to mimic him by no means, um, but obviously a guy that is, you know, predominantly the goat of country music, basically. Um, you know, uh, he is, he's the, he's the great entertainer. He's a great vocalist. He, he interacts with the crowd and all those things. And that that is something that I think all artists should try to do. And so, yeah, when you come to my show, you're going to kind of expect that. Um, I'm going to kind of take you on a roller coaster ride. And um, that's the idea. And I want to get you involved. And I want to I want I want to try to make sure that every person in the audience, I don't care if there's 50 people or 5000. I want to try to reach every single person. And if I can do that, um, you know, that's that's kind of what my goal is. But I definitely I think fans want that roller coaster, at least at least for me, for my experience. I think they want that high energy in your face, um, having a great time. And then, you know, it's country music, you know what I mean? And and I'm not afraid to, to talk to the fans and tell them about a song and how we wrote it or um you know i'm not afraid to stop the show and high five a, a couple fans and 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 maybe even pull them on stage you know so i think at the end of the day when you come to see my show i want you to leave and go wow that was like that was some of the best two hours of my life right there and hopefully i took them away from any stress that they might have had or any negativity that might be in their life at that moment and hopefully for this, you know, them couple hours, I was able to to capture their their attention and 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 take them to a place of peace and happiness, and and hopefully they leave with that. And maybe that feel good feeling, right? And, and maybe that feel good feeling. And that's how I segue into the next song. So let's go ahead and play uh, "Feel Good Feeling" here by Ryan Daniel. Good 
time Everybody here working on the sand lines All week we've been sitting on go Now it's time we're ready to roll Like a bonfire, light it up Take a stereo and crank it up Gather around, put your hands in the air It's going down and everybody's here Take a drink, yeah, turn it up Till you just can't get enough There ain't nobody thinking about leaving I need some more of that feel-good feeling The tip's night, five and a climbing Tennessee sun sure shining Down on us like a spring break but man, we're just chilling at the lake Like a bonfire, light it up Take a stereo and crank it up Gather around, put your hands in the air It's going down and everybody's here Take a drink, yeah, turn it up Till you just can't get enough There ain't nobody thinking about leaving I need some more of that feel-good feeling Rolls around We'll be right here Just burning it down Like a bonfire, light it up Take a stereo and crank it up Gather around, put your hands in the air It's going down and everybody's here Take a drink, yeah, turn it up Till you just can't get enough There ain't nobody thinking about leaving I need some more of that feel-good feeling Yeah, that feel-good feeling Yeah, that feel-good feeling And that was Feel Good Feeling by Ryan Daniel here on Hank's Corner. So we're getting... Hitting 2022 strong. Uh, you got an you know upcoming album. Uh, tell me what what are your plans uh, for 2022? Uh, we are dead in the middle of booking right now. Um, we, we've already got shows, but we um, I'll probably start posting my shows um, later on in the week or whatever. Uh, maybe next week. Um, so we're kind of in the middle of booking season. Uh, getting, getting everything kind of squared away where we're going to be. So our plan is to tour a whole bunch. Uh, it's called the Y'all Ain't Ready for This Tour. Obviously, the name of the album, uh, which is out. Everybody can get it. You know, all your streaming and download sites. Um, we've got some some. Uh, gosh, I've got some news. I can't, I can't drop now, but I did have a meeting this morning uh, in Nashville with uh, a pretty cool company. Uh, and, and that's going to be coming out here in the next probably week, uh, that news, which is leading to some other stuff. So 2022 is going to be wild. My goal is to be on the road and hit every single venue that will let us come in the door. Um, uh, this is kind of the y'all ain't ready for this tour. This is, this is the one we're going to come out and I'm going to play. I don't care if your bar holds a hundred people. We're pulling the tour bus in and we're going to pack the place and we're going to, I'm taking any gig we can get because I want every fan to to know that I appreciate them, I want every town to know that 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 their town is not too small. I want every club and bar to know that it's not too small for me to come play, uh, because that's where I got my start, and that's kind of what we're doing this year. We're playing, you know, big stuff, small stuff. Um, we kick off in March, uh, actually in Kansas. We're going to be at the uh, the world famous Emporia Granada, which I'm so excited. Like this is iconic to play there. So. Um, 2022 is going to be wild and um, and just keep watching for for more updates of what's going on, new merch, all kinds of things. 
Yeah. So, and, and that's also, uh, you know, a mark of a great entertainer to leave people on a cliffhanger. So uh, everybody out there, you need to be sure to be checking Ryan Daniel's social media. You could also find him on ryandanielmusic.com. The uh, website's listed here below. And uh, if you do make it out to Florida on your t- a tour, I definitely would love to see you again. So maybe you can uh, drive the bus down this way. I can tell you that, uh, with that said, a uh, little, little cliffhanger, little, little, I'm stomping my foot. Uh, Florida is on the list. So, uh, be watching out and uh, we'll be in touch and, and, and thank you so much for, for, for inviting me on, on, uh, on your show. Uh, it's been amazing. It's always, uh, again, it's always humbling, uh, to be asked to do, to do interviews. And, um, it shows that, uh, that, that the work pays off, but it also shows folks like you, um, artists like us need you. Uh, we need, we need you because, uh, you help get us, get us out there to the masses. And, um, you know, I brought these, you know, folks like you and all my fans are the reason, you know, we, we got this one, you know, uh, and then the, uh, the one we got the other day, you know, uh, the million, um, you know, so I, I can't thank you and all my fans enough. Uh, for that it's uh it's so humbling uh go stream my stuff our next goal is to get camo to be my very first gold single and we are very very close so go to my spotify download it stream it do all those things uh and i think by i think this year we could we could go gold um and i think you can do it too (laughs) yeah and all you artists out there remember these plaques right here, these certifications, that's no record label. That's no management. That's no booking agency. So do not let people tell you that you can't do it. Um, I promise you it can be done and there's proof that it can be done. So again, Hank, man, thank you so much for letting me be on here. Uh, thank you to all the fans, my sponsors, uh, and everybody that supports me. And I can't wait to see you guys on the road. Y'all are in for this for 2022.